And what's up, everybody? Hope everybody's doing well. It is GC Live Friday free for all edition with a special guest, though. As most of you probably know, I'm going to be joined today by former Gamecock and NFL defender and current South Point High School right there in Rock Hill, South Carolina, head football coach Devontae Holloman. So excited about having him. That will take place in about 20 minutes, 19 or 20 minutes at about 1220. Devontae uh, joining me on short notice. Has a quick break there from his duties at South Point as a teacher and as a coach, so appreciate his time in advance joining us. Notice something different about today. I'm bigger on the screen. Wes is not here. He has chosen to take off, which is totally fine. He totally deserves it. So flying solo today. So appreciate everybody being here very much, and we're going to definitely make this an interactive show. Nectarios, what's up? Drop in a bunch of the Gamecock emojis. Rooster emojis, whatever you want to call it. I heard a rooster this morning at my house at about 4 o'clock a.m., which has been quite an unwelcome addition to our home. Uh, the rooster is not living in our home, but he is somewhere down the road, and we frequently hear him early in the morning. So uh, it's cool to hear that in williams Bryce Stadium, which uh, a lot of us will be hearing this season, as there's going to be probably more fans in the stands, but not so much that early in the morning. So already a lot of you joining in here. Uh, via our streaming channels, YouTube and Facebook and Twitter via Periscope. Nectarios correcting with another <laughs> rooster emoji. Appreciate you, man. Good afternoon, Tyrell. Hope you're doing well, YouTube listener. Uh, before we get started, before we jump into some things, I want to take you guys' questions. I want to talk about some of the things that are going on, obviously, Gamecock Baseball, uh, starting a weekend series against Mercer before things get going even more with uh, a series against Texas and Vanderbilt SEC play getting going. So exciting stuff for the baseball team coming up. Lots to talk about with Gamecock football recruiting. Obviously, winter workouts going on, spring practice getting started later this month. So even though uh, no active football season, still a lot going on. So before we dive into that, as always, GC Live is brought to you by Clint Hammond of the Mortgage Network. He is a Gamecock fan, a Gamecock Central subscriber, and supporter of the show, friend of the show. Clint at Mortgage Network is the guy that you need to call if you're looking to refinance. Rates are super low. Any questions that you have about the mortgage process, give Clint a call, 803-771-6933, or you can simply visit clinthammond.com. Clint, his office at Mortgage Network right across from Junior High School downtown. So does a fantastic job, and we appreciate his support of the show. So, hey, what's going on, Daniel, Frederick, Kevin, Devin Tyler, Key, Karishi. Hope I pronounced your name correctly. Appreciate everyone joining us in here on the chat. And, again, we're going to be joined in about 15 or 20 minutes, hopefully, by Devontae Holloman, current South Point head coach and former, obviously, Gamecock and Dallas Cowboys defender. So if you got any questions that you want us to try to ask Devontae, we've got a short window. Um, I've got a little list of a couple things that I want him to hit on. I want him to hit on Omega Blake, obviously a guy that he coached at South Point last year, Gamecock signee, uh, inked with the Gamecocks back in December. So he'll be taking his talents to Columbia. He'll be joining the program and uh, probably start out as a receiver that could play defensive back, could do some different things, did a lot of different things in high school for Holloman at South Point. Want to get his take on that game. Want to talk to him a little bit about some differences in the recruiting process. Uh, now, with him being a high school coach, as opposed to what he went through as a player in the 2009 class, you have to remember Devontae Holloman, former Clemson commitment, um, who was in a teammate and in the same class as former Gamecock great Stefan Gilmore, that 2009 recruiting class that obviously had Alshon Jeffrey. So really good group in state for the Gamecocks, a great haul for them. And want to get dig in a little bit on some of the differences that, that he sees out of the recruiting process nowadays. Are, are, are there any differences? Uh, aging myself a little bit, I've, I've covered recruiting now for Gamecock Central um, about 11 years, uh, you know, on a full-time basis. So uh, for a while, I, I covered Devontae as a recruit. Uh, doesn't even seem like that long ago. Now he's already cycled through being a college player, uh, being an NFL player, and now uh, spent some time around the program, um, you know, helping out the Gamecock football program is now in high school coaching and doing a fantastic job. So 
Yep. So appreciate everybody uh, being on the chat. Give me one second and let me situate something here. We got some spam going on in the comments that I want to get situated. There we go. All right. So Karishi has a question that I'd like to get to. What players are we recruiting? Do you think we have the best chance to land? So obviously there, there's a lot packed into that question. Um, you know, South Carolina is going to take, we don't know the exact number this cycle. Um, you know, obviously you could look at it and calculate, okay, how many recruiting spots are there right this second? But that's going to depend. Um, is there going to be more attrition after the spring? Um, is there going to be, um, you know, some, some spots open up in some form or fashion? How will South Carolina handle it? We, we don't know. We know that there's certain spots that are going to be priorities. Wide receiver is going to remain a priority. I would think DB is going to remain a priority. They're going to have to have some balance at some other positions. Obviously going for a quarterback, a running back or two in this class. Obviously you have to mix in some linemen. So they've, uh, you know, th there are a lot of priorities at a lot of different spots. And, and here's the thing, you know, to some degree, this, this recruiting board is still taking shape, okay? You look at the 2022 class, there's still a lot of offers getting sent out. I think there are, in the past 24 hours, there are three to five offers that were sent out to prospects. So that's an ongoing process. There's still no spring evaluation period. That's typically April 15th through May 31st. That is a dead period still because of COVID and all that. So we may get camps back this summer. If so, that'll be substantial because with camps comes the opportunity to take visits. In-person visits have been shut down for, what, 16 months? I mean, over a year. Prospects haven't been able to take in-person visits. So all you're seeing for prospects right now are taking these visits where they basically go on their own dime and they walk around campus and they don't have any interaction with any coaches face-to-face -face because it's not allowed. So that's the extent of what people have been able to do. It's not ideal. So... The point is, we're going to see, I think, more activity this summer if it indeed opens up. South Carolina, Shane Beamer, his staff will have a chance to have some camp dates. If camps do indeed return, they'll be able to assess some prospects in person. They'll be able to have people on campus to, to host them for visits, maybe some guys that have not been for a while, who have never been, who want to come back, and then just go from there and, and just see where, you know, where things are at with a lot of these prospects. Now, that said, there's certainly a list of guys um, at certain spots that you feel like South Carolina, you know, has at least some traction with. I mean, you look at quarterback Tanner Bailey out of Alabama, four-star guy, is someone that South Carolina has a good shot with. Is it a lock? No. Oregon's in there. Mississippi State's in there. Could be some others that jump in the mix, but those are those are the ones that have really been mentioned the most, right? And so uh, Tanner Bailey is someone to watch for South Carolina. You look at running back Michael Allen out of North Carolina, who was from Ontario Hardesty's hometown of New Bern, North Carolina. Um, you know, or, he, or he's from that area in North Carolina, rather, plays at Rose High School. Someone that they made contact with, another four-star back. Jaylon Glover out of Florida, another back that's a really good player that South Carolina's got a good shot with. Nick Singleton out of Pennsylvania, another four-star running back. Uh, that actually has some family ties to South Carolina. Um, you know, you look at wide receiver, obviously, Antonio Williams of Dutch Fork. We had Jason Barnes on the show, Wes and I did back on Wednesday, just talking a little bit about, you know, a lot of different things with Jason. But one of the things we hit on was Antonio Williams, uh, his people there at Dutch Fork. And that's someone that, you know, I think South Carolina has done quite well with. So there are a lot of guys out there. I mean, we could go position by position and and really – you know, start breaking that thing down. But I, I think the point is overall not to sort of push your question to the side or not be specific, but, you know, there are some guys here and there at each position that South Carolina has gained a little traction with. But um, I think we're going to know a lot more. The, the first step is really, is there going to be in-person visits and camps? And, and it looks like things are trending in the direction of being able to do that at some point. And I think things will get narrowed down a lot more. Class obviously got off to a good start. Anthony Rose, the four-star DB committing. Um, we got a story up on the front page right now. Speaking of guys, you know, asking about guys at South Carolina's got a good shot at. Front page of GamecockCentral.com. Right now you see several stories. Wes's recruiting roundup with new in-state offers going out, a lot of different things, baseball, basketball, women's basketball content. But a Florida defensive tackle, Jamari Lyons, 
uh, who I spoke with last night, who's built a really nice relationship with Jimmy Lindsay and with Shane Beamer. So uh, he's he's a guy that's been on a virtual visit and uh, seems to really like what he's seen. So Gamecocks will probably battle Florida on that one and a bunch of others, but that's definitely one to watch. Hey, Jeremy. Hey, Stickman83. David Williams. Sorry, just catching up on, on some shout outs. Stan Steele says go Gamecocks via Facebook. Jeffrey Hicken, <laughs> looking good. Chris, you get some sleep here recently. That is, congratulations. I feel like I should give you something free. Definitely deserving of a shout out. First time ever anyone has actually complimented my appearance on the show. So I do really appreciate it. Maybe less sunburn or windburn on the face. Uh, I was out in the cold this morning. I don't know what it was. Uh, I actually got last night the least amount of sleep that I have in a long time. So uh, I don't know. Maybe I should sleep less. Not sure. But hey, I really appreciate the shout out there, my man. Uh, thanks to everyone who's in the chat. Feel free to get in your questions, whether they're for me or if all goes well. Again, about 10 minutes or so, we're going to have Devontae Holloman on the show, former Gamecock uh former Gamecock uh, Spur defender, NFL linebacker, and South Point head football coach. Tyler Rice has a question. Is Gunnar Stockton still realistically in play for South Carolina, or has he pretty much shut it down? Yeah, I think things are shut down there with Gunnar Stockton. He, um, you know, It seems like all parties have sort of moved on and, and accepted where things are. Um, you know, Gunnar, the expectation was at some point that he would it looked like it was trending towards some decommitting. Then he did. And the natural question from there was, hey, is Gunner going to be a guy that South Carolina is going to be able to get in on again? And it just didn't seem very likely. Um, Auburn was certainly a school that people were looking at, but Georgia was the one that, that seemed to gain the most immediate traction. That's where he ended up committing. And so Gunner's a guy that doesn't really play games with the recruiting process. I don't think he, he wanted to, to have to decommit, but it, it just all the circumstances with the coaching changes at South Carolina, that's what he felt like was best. And so that's the direction he went. He kept it pretty quiet and from there committed to Georgia. And I don't see anything changing there. It very much seems like he's, he's pretty locked in with Georgia. He said that publicly with Gunner, you know, sometimes with these kids, with these prospects, you have to sort of have your radar, your antenna up, and you have to have sort of a radar of, you know, which ones do you know when they say something that you can take it to the bank or whatever. With Gunner, I've always found him to be a pretty even keel guy, and he says, hey, I'm signing with Georgia. So that's why I've seen South Carolina move forward with some other offers. Uh, Tanner Bailey, you know, the guy I mentioned earlier from Alabama, the four-star out of Alabama, he's certainly one. Drew Alar out of Ohio is someone that South Carolina offered that I like a lot on film as well. Uh, Penn State, Notre Dame have been very involved. Notre Dame just picked up a four-star quarterback commitment of their own. So that makes it a little bit more interesting. Does that does that make Alar a little bit more likely for Penn State, or does it open it up even further? Um, and then you have uh, Taven Jackson out of Indiana. Uh, I forgot his name for just a second. So Taven Jackson out of Indiana is another guy that South Carolina offered and likes, and he has a really uh, substantial offer list as well. Wally asks, where is Wes? I know everybody misses Wes. I miss him too. Uh, Wes is has the day off from the show. Going to just uh, hang out a little bit and uh, travel in a little bit. So we definitely hope Wes has a good time away from the show and he will be back. We'll both be back is the plan on Monday together as usual. Stickman83 asks, whatever happened to the transfer quarterback, cornerback, Nigel Knott in South Carolina? So South Carolina, now that was in that transition period um, between, you know, Will Muschamp and Shane Beamer. Obviously, Nigel not transferring from East Carolina, former Alabama player. You know, I I don't even know where he ended up. Let's see. Does anybody know? Returning this. Is he going to – someone put it in the chat. Like, oh, Ole Miss. Yeah, I thought I saw that. Yeah, so he's heading to Ole Miss. Uh, you know, not was someone that South Carolina did dig in on, did have some conversations with. But ultimately, it didn't seem like things ever seriously advanced with Knott and South Carolina. So, all right, if you got any more questions, feel free to get them in. Just a quick housekeeping note. 
We are scheduled to have Devontae Holloman on in about five minutes. I'm going to check with him soon. Today, you know, normally, guys, Wes, behind the scenes, you may notice he's doing a lot of stuff. A lot of times he's running all the different things, whether it's our overlays, our banners, popping guys in and out. He's much more tech savvy with that than I am. So he's normally doing that stuff. So I'm running the running the show, so to speak, today while trying to still stay engaged with everyone. So going to try to get make sure that we have Devante on in about five minutes. Uh, if you have any questions for him, throw them in the chat, YouTube, Facebook. Periscope. Throw any questions for Devontae Holloman on. Can't promise that we'll get to them all, but if you do have some, um, then drop them. If you got some recruiting questions, some Gamecock football questions for me, uh, I'll be glad to answer those as well. And we appreciate everyone participating. It is free for all Friday here on the show. And uh, that means that we are taking your questions and really leaning on you guys uh, to, to interact with us. So Devontae Holloman, uh, he just sent me a message actually saying that he's sort of waiting, uh, waiting for the bell to ring at South Point High so that he can uh, so that he can take a break and go ahead and join us. And then we'll have him on soon. He's going to actually join us just via phone. Not sure where he is in terms of location at the school. So he won't be on video for us, but he is going to uh, be on the phone. I'll just pop up a little graphic. That way you guys don't have to look at me as long. And you can look at a picture of Devontae while we listen to him talk. So Justin Hayes says, uh, I'd like to hear Devontae speak on Omega. Definitely. That, that's uh, We're definitely going to ask Devontae, assuming that we definitely get him on, we're going to ask him about Omega Blake. That, of course, the three-star signee out of South Point, formerly committed to Will Muschamp, still signed with the Gamecocks in December, um, could play wide receiver, could play defensive back, played some quarterback in high school. He, he won't be a quarterback in, at the college level, but certainly an interesting prospect, someone that we're, we're going to ask Devontae about. You know, looking back at Devontae's career, it was really interesting. He was a guy that, you know, was committed to Clemson. Former, he was at across the border at Charlotte, right? Um, moved to South Point committed to Clemson and then Tommy Bowden got fired. Then um, after Bowden was fired, things opened up a lot more. And as I recall it, and we may get into this Devon with Devontae time depending, he he opened things up. South Carolina obviously made a lot of sense. Ellis Johnson, you know, did did a fantastic job with Stefan Gilmore, with Devontae Holloman, in state recruiting. And so Holloman, South Carolina was a, was a school that he, he took a hard look at. North Carolina jumped in there. Remember, LSU jumped in there. But it pretty quickly be, became evident that South Carolina was going to be a place that, that had a lot of traction and, and, a, and a great chance with Holloman and didn't really have much traction before Ellis Johnson was hired, before Tommy Bowden got fired at Clemson. So, so some really good fortune for South Carolina with the Bowden situation. But then obviously having Ellis Johnson and, and Stefan Gilmore as a teammate and the guy that Devontae became close with, those things helped tremendously. Um, they were able to get him in the fold. And the, and the interesting thing was, you know, Devontae ended up being a guy that I, I think I remember him putting something on Twitter about it during his playing days or, or right after the uh, Tiger Killer, you know, because I think he had three interceptions in four games against Clemson or something like that. Certainly remember some of those plays that he made against Clemson ended up sort of being a thorn in the Tiger's side. So, a uh, lot of lot of really good memories. Then went to the Cowboys in the NFL. Uh, did a really a fantastic job with them. Had a bright future. Unfortunately, had to uh, end his playing days with, with an injury. But then quickly transitioned into coaching, which was not surprising. Uh, anyone who knew Devontae in high school and college could see that he was a really sharp guy and, and probably was going to have a coaching future. Nectario says Beamer doesn't seem to like chasing people that don't want to be Carolina. I'm sure he'd love to have someone with his talent, but I don't see him chasing Gunner. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, you got to remember Gunner's relationships at South Carolina, I mean, they're good. I mean, he's got a really good relationship with Connor Shaw. He's got a really good relationship with Mike Bobo and that whole, you know, George Bobo, Mike Bobo's father, you know, basically taught him how to throw the football and he's still not going to Auburn, you know. And so I think it was he handled it very respectfully and handled it well. Um, you know, I, I think that the sense that I got in the immediate aftermath of Gunner decommitting was that South Carolina would make a run 
and see where things happen. But I think the expectation was that it was going to be very difficult. And I remember even at the outset when, when folks were saying, hey, it's probably, you know, everybody was thinking, myself included, hey, Auburn, you know, that, that's definitely one to watch. And, and they were. I actually picked up some some indications on my end that there was a thought it may be Georgia, and, that, and that's what it ended up being. So, um, yeah, I think he handled it well. I think I think South Carolina knew once he decommitted that it was probably going to be an uphill battle. And so I, I wouldn't even classify it as, you know, not chasing, but it, it was just you got to recruit guys, you know, even guys that really, really love your school. Um, the right kind of guys are going to have tons of options. The guys that you need to sign are going to have tons of options. And um, Gunner certainly had tons of options. Some some guys, Anthony Rose, who they've got committed, had some good options. A lot of guys that they're chasing in this class and that they'll continue chasing into the future, recruiting, um, I should I should say, rather than chasing, you know, are going to have a lot of options. And so even if they really like your school, you got to close it out. You got to land those guys. And so I think they took – South Carolina took the approach of, hey, uh, you know, we're, we're going to – we're going to make a run at it. But I think South Carolina had a sense of it probably wasn't going to happen. And so they moved on to some other targets. All right. Uh, We, I think we have Devontae Hallman on. I can't see him. So I cannot say for sure whether or not I can't have him give me a thumbs up, but I think we've got him on here. So I'm going to try to add him. Devontae, we got you on here. man. Yes, sir. How y'all doing? All right. Doing fine, man. Devontae, appreciate you, man. It's just myself today. Okay. Dante Hallman, former Gamecock uh, defensive back, linebacker, NFL linebacker, and current head coach at South Point High School. Really appreciate you joining us today, man, especially on short notice and with such a short break. I appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you man. Absolutely, man. So want to jump into some things. I know I know we don't have long uh, to, to have you on here, but one thing I want to ask you, you know, I, I know in past stuff we've done with you, we sort of covered your own recruiting process, but I, I want to ask you a more general sort of broad question. I know that, you know, you're in a different position now. You're in sort of a different chair, so to speak. You, you've come up to where you've you've been a recruit, a highly regarded recruit. Then you played college football. You made the NFL. Now you're a high school coach that I can personally attest to. You do a really good job of helping your guys out with recruiting. So what kind of changes, if any, have you seen in the recruiting process from, say, 2008, 2009 until now? Uh, it's totally different. You know, number one, with Twitter um, being, you know, one of the main ways people kind of communicate and promote themselves. Um, and then, two, you know, COVID's put a whole nother spin on recruiting. Um, you know, just uh, communication is different. Promoting yourself is a whole lot different and having access to film and, um, things like that and being able to compare yourself to players or coaches being able to compare you to players um, kind of across the country. Um, you know, again, just with technology advancing, it's, it's, I ain't going to say it's easy to find guys, but, uh, you know, being able to see film and, and, and really, you know, see what you're getting out of a prospect has become a lot easier for coaches and a lot harder for players on the opposite end of that. Yeah, no doubt. So what what kind of advice as you sort of, help walk your guys there at South Point through the recruiting process. What advice, if any, do you give them, whether it's something that you lean on from your own experience or just what you observe? You know, what, what do you tell them to help them through the process to make these hard decisions? Uh, there, are, there are a lot of things. You know, number one, I always say, uh, see, you know, pick a school where you see yourself going to school, whether you're playing sports or not. Um, you know, throughout the recruiting process, you know, there's a lot of different factors. Um, you know, your grades, number one, taking care of your, your GPA, test scores, clearing house, uh, clearing all of those hurdles first to make yourself available to be recruited. Um, and then from there, um, passing the eye test, you know, doing the right things in the weight room, um, having a good season, always taking care of your, your team that you're currently on. And, you know, coaches want to recruit winners. So uh, making sure your team is um, having a successful season and, uh, you know, that you're a team player. And, um, you know, you believe it or not, these coaches check, you know, they're very thorough in the, in the recruiting process um, in terms of checking with teachers, admin, people that you interact with daily, um, just to see what kind of person you are as well as what kind of player you are. Because that kind of goes um, a long way in terms of, you know, team continuity and what the head coach sees and wants for his team. So, um, again, you know, recruiting is such a, a hard thing to kind of, you know, put a thumb on. Like, hey, these are the couple of things that you need to take care of. It's a, it's a journey and it's a process of a lot of different factors from academics 
athletes to, you know, your, your actual football season to uh, lifting, um, all of those things. And surprisingly, one of the things that I've learned a lot more recently is coaches love multiple sport athletes. So, um, again, just, you know, doing the right things uh, on the field, off the field, in the classroom and making yourself, uh, you know, available to be recruited and um, checking off all of those boxes and different things that they kind of look for. Yeah, no doubt, man. Good stuff. So, uh, speaking of recruits and recruiting, I, I want to go to one of your recent uh, pupils that is actually going to be playing. Obviously, South Carolina Omega Blake, um, you know, obviously did did some different things for you guys at South Point. You know, had some versatility. T tell us about Omega as a prospect and just you know what you think of his game and, and what you think of of it translating to college, specifically in South Carolina. I think one thing that really stands out about Omega is his competitiveness. Um, it kind of reminds me of, you know, the group of players that I play with at South Carolina, you know, even, you know, every day in practice, every drill, wanting to win every rep, he's that kind of kid. Um, doesn't want anybody to, you know, have anything to kind of hold over his head. So um, competitiveness stands out. Um, athleticism, um, you know, the speed. You know, there were a lot of questions about his speed and, and what I, you know, kept telling coaches, and especially South Carolina, is I've never seen anybody catch him from behind. Um, you know, if he if he's even with somebody, he usually, you know, takes a step uh, forward and leaves. Him. Um, so, you know, athleticism as well. Um, and then also just the ability to go up and high point the football. It's been a long time. You know, maybe since, uh, you know, Alshon Jeffrey or, uh, you know, Dez Bryant, I've seen him do it a couple of times. And, you know, where they, you know, they went up and high pointed the ball. They just kind of left my mouth wide open and kind of shocked. Um, Omega's done that a couple of times, not only um, during practice, but in some games as well. You know, he, he does a good job of high-point football. So between his competitiveness, athleticism, and being able to, you know, play the ball in there, I can see him helping either immediately on offense, um, and if not, if it does work out on offense, I can see him moving over, playing cornerback, and um, being a factor there as well. Now, Omega's obviously not the only prospect that you guys have at the school. I want to ask you about one that I understand South Carolina has shown, you know, a pretty good amount of, of interest in lately, or at least checking on, is Quan Peterson out of your 2022 class. Uh, t tell me a little bit about about Quan and, and maybe the course of his recruitment, if it's starting to pick up a little bit with South Carolina and others. Uh, his recruitment is definitely starting to pick up. Some, you know, coaches are starting to take notice to things that he, you know, he's done on the football field. But a lot of things people don't, you know, something that people don't know about Quan. He's also a really good basketball player. Um, led his team to a state championship. They'll be playing tomorrow against Hilton Head. Um, but Quan is a really good athlete, very long, um, and his speed is, is kind of deceptive. You know, um, of course, uh, you know he, he's still new to position playing cornerback. He was a, a ninth grade quarterback, so. Uh, we moved him to cornerback uh, his sophomore year, and, and you know he kind of you know learned on the fly. Last year, you saw him settle in a little bit more, and uh, you know this year, I expect him to settle in a lot more. But he plays the ball well in the air. Uh, you know, very, uh, you know, just has to work on his technique a little bit, eyes, hands, and feet. But you know, the more reps he gets at the position, I see him becoming uh, one of those elite corners, hopefully at the college level. Um, he's a competitor, just like I said, Omega was. Doesn't like, you know, doesn't like anybody to get the best of him in practice. And, you know, it kind of helps when he's going up against Omega Blake, you know, that type of receiver every day uh, to make him better. So um, I, I, can, I, I hope to see Quan, you know, continue to grow um, as a player. Um, but he's definitely a, a big time prospect and coaches are starting to take notice. And, uh, you know, he, he's going to be he's going to be a good one. Yep. Now let's shift back over to South Carolina specifically. The Gamecock, you know, obviously new coaching staff there with Shane Beamer. I know you know Coach Beamer. What are your, what have been your thoughts on just the job that he's done? Obviously, they haven't played a game yet. Haven't even started spring practice until later this month. But just what have you seen out of him? What do you know about him in terms of his his character and traits that that you know impress you? Or what have been your general thoughts on him and also his staff that he's put together? Um, you know, he's been dealing with a lot of uh, obstacles, or, you know, kind of hurdles since he since he got the job. But I think he's handled it well. One thing I know about him that I think everybody's starting to see is, uh, you know, he's a player's coach, taking care of his players um, on the field and off the field, you know, making sure they're equipped to have uh, all, everything that they need to be successful. Um, you know, I think he's uh, when, when he came and saw the place and saw the facility, you know, he kind of saw a, a hidden gem, if you want to say that is. Um, in terms of things that we had um, to offer and 
uh, you know, making sure it's known what, what we're doing uh, on the field, off the field, academically to kind of help our players. Um, so, you know, he's a player's coach, but one thing that people will see that he also, you know, as, as you know, I guess nice as he can be, you know, he can jump somebody in a heartbeat. So, um, you know, he's going to be tough on them as well. Um, he's going to push them to compete. Um, and, and that's what you're seeing. I, I love all the, you know, the videos that they're posting and seeing the guys get after it kind of reminds me of the years that, you know, I was in South Carolina. So to see that kind of come back and, and see it kind of come to fruition, I'm, you know, wishing Coach Beamer the best of luck and, um, you know, the coaching staff and all those guys that I know on staff as well. Last one for you, Devontae, and I'll let you run. I know you got a tight schedule today. Uh, you know, as for yourself, obviously you moved up quickly in the high school season, which is really quality. Um, you know, what, what is, you know, your sort of maybe long-term goal in terms of coaching? Do, do you feel like, you know, you want to stay at the high school level and continue, you know, doing that? Do you want to try to get into the into the college coaching game? You know, what what are your thoughts on that? Where do you see yourself going in the next several years with that? Uh, honestly, man, I'm a guy that works where my feet is planted. You know, I'm never looking for the next job. You know, I figure if I do a good enough job kind of where I am, um, you know, those opportunities will kind of present itself at in some point, some weird fashion. So my focus is uh, to get South Point back on top. Uh, you know, we've taken a step forward each year. Um, hopefully we take another step forward this year after making it uh, to the second round last year, losing in the second round to a really good AC4 team. So, uh, you know, I'm focusing on what we have. Um, Quan Peterson, uh, my quarterback, Xavier Ryan McCrory, will kind of lead us this season. And I'm looking forward to, a, you know, a really good season and competing here. Um, I love the high school level. Um, you know, the reason I got into coaching is kind of to pass that knowledge back um, and, and share my experiences that I've had in hopes to um, help the next kind of get to where I was and go beyond. So, um, you know, that, I, I love the high school level and everything that presents, and that's kind of where my head and focus is right now. Good stuff. All right, Devontae, that's former Gamecock. Out defender Devontae Holloman, former NFL player, current head coach at South Point High School. Devontae, really appreciate your time, man. Thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you. I uh, hope to do it again soon. All right, man. Have a good one. All right, that is Devontae Holloman, or was Devontae Holloman. Hope you all enjoyed the chat we had with him. Uh, really, really good stuff from Devontae. Like I said earlier, really, really sharp guy. Um, always has been. And not surprised that he's doing he's he's moved up in the high school game. Uh, did did want to get a sense for, you know, long term goals that, that he may have in coaching. Some some guys take Devontae's approach and they say, sort of I'm gonna I'm gonna be where I am and just sort of see what happens. Some guys say I definitely want to stay on the high school level. Some guys say, Hey, I'd like to move up to the college level, the NFL, whatever it may be. Seems like he's keeping that pretty open. But I do think in the future he's gonna continue to have you know, more and more opportunities does a really good job. And something that, uh, you know, we're actually going to be hitting on in, in some writings that we mentioned, we are going to be mentioning Quan Peterson in a, in a written update that we're going to have on the website soon, sort of letting everybody know what, what's going on there. A 2022 prospect at South Point that South Carolina has inquired about the Devontae coaches at Quan Peterson. Another thing that he stood, that he said that stood out to me, guys, is that, you know, he talks about Shane Beamer and his players coaching personality, but he, he, he will jump. He'll jump on you basically if needed. And that's something that I've picked up in some conversations in the last several days is that, um, you know, Shane Beamer's ability to, you know, capture attention and, and command rooms and, and run meetings and just things like that, you know, have been impressive to some people that, that have observed that um, at, at South Carolina since he got the job. So. Good, good to hear there. Obviously, South Carolina in the midst of workouts in advance of spring practice, which will be getting going in a little less than three weeks, March 24th. We don't know, so this question may follow, how many fans can go to spring practice, how many fans can go to the spring game. We don't know that. We know that South Carolina made no changes to actual spring sports games attendance, but we don't know what it'll look like in the spring. MC, hey, Devontae, please bring the swag back to USC. I hope you're doing well. Yeah, Devontae doing real well for himself. Thanks for weighing in, MC. Uh, definitely that group had a lot of swagger. And Devontae, something else interesting he said, you know, talking about some of the, I guess you could call them the hype videos that South Carolina is putting up on social media. Now, those will happen any year, any regime, any record, et cetera. Uh, but there have been some different things that I think you've seen on them, whether it's in um, in tone or, or different uh, – you know, diff different structures of the videos, different things that the team's doing in workouts. I think those have been well received. And Devontae said that, that that sort of reminded him 
you know, of his playing days. Obviously, he played with some great players, and he played on some really, really good teams at South Carolina. Let's go back to some questions here on the chat line. Stickman83, got to ask your opinion on the DK situation. Saw an article on that yesterday. Assume we're referring to Darion Kendrick, the, the uh, Clemson transfer. Um, yeah, actually, you know, several schools have inquired there. Obviously, he's, he's a talented guy. I don't anticipate him ended up at South Carolina. One of the schools or, or the school that I heard the most yesterday, and I, and I haven't closely, closely tracked that story just because I don't anticipate there being much of a South Carolina angle to it. But I did hear that Alabama is is definitely a program to watch. The job that Nick Saban has done, it's pedigree. Obviously, it's a winning program, a contender year in and year out. Um, and the structure that he has in that program, uh, that's certainly one to watch. But there's been a bunch. I mean, Florida. Georgia, I mean, there have been a bunch, you know, that have called on Darion Kendrick. All right, guys, so we are going to cut the show pretty short today. Uh, again, flying solo today, didn't have Devontae for too long. Really appreciate his time. Uh, we had him on for about 10 or 15 minutes uh, right in the middle of a lunch break for South Point High. So appreciate everyone joining in today for a, a short free-for-all Friday featuring Devontae Holloman. If you're not a member of GamecockCentral.com, Great time to jump on board. Come on in. Use the promo code GameCox at checkout. We'll get you 50% off your first year. It's a great deal. It's already 27 cents a day, so that cuts it down to, I'm not I'm not good at math, 13 and a half, something like that. No, less than that. So, anyway, check us out at GameCockCentral.com. Um, we are presented by Clint Hammond of the Mortgage Network. As always, ClintHammond.com, 803-771-6933. Frederick, appreciate your kind words about the interview with Devontae. If you missed any of the Devontae interview, go back on YouTube or go to our front page of GamecockCentral.com. Play it from the beginning. Uh, you can hear some of the stuff at the beginning, and then you can hear the Devontae Holloman interview in full. So really appreciate you guys. Make sure you visit our friend Clint Hammond at ClintHammond.com, the Mortgage Network. Appreciate everyone for joining us, and we will be back. Wes and I will be back on Monday. So until then, we'll see you guys next time.